We just spent about a week forming this pond, digging this pond, and forming that beautiful looking dam. Now we're gonna dig it all up again. <laughs> okay, not all of it, but a big section of this dam has to be dug up today. Why? If this pond were to fill up to the very tippy top, which we don't want it to do, and water were to start overflowing over the sides of the dam, it can actually cause your dam to fail and burst. We could lose the entire dam just like that. So today it's really important that we start on the next part of this project, which is the standpipe. And that should keep this running smoothly and safely, hopefully for the next 100 years. Let's get digging. I got my helper here today. My son's gonna help me measure up what we need in pipe. We gotta get a lot of pipe. It's big and it's expensive. So we're gonna try to design this to not be too expensive. 12 foot diameter pipe right now is like $27 a foot. So this is gonna hurt. Let's go see how big this thing's gonna be. All right, so. Is. This one hurts. Ooh, we just measured it where we want the pipe to run to from the bottom to outlet on the other side. I think 70 feet. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, this is uh, awful. Pull out the desk calculator 70 times 27. Oh. oh my, that is a lot more money than I wanted to spend on pipe. That's just for one length. We want to have a drain pipe at the bottom and a stand pipe. That would double that. We're looking at almost $4,000 just in pipe for this pond. We are going to... Uh, Stop her crying and get working. Now maybe some of you are wondering why didn't we do this before we put the dam in? That's a great question. Basically, this is one of those areas where I trust someone who's much more experienced than me. Danny has put in a lot of ponds in his life, and he said it's much easier to build your dam and then dig a trench through it, put the pipe in and compact it, than it is to put it in at the bottom and constantly be worried about running over your pipe, breaking it with the bulldozer. So instead of worrying about it this whole time, we built this beautiful dam. Today we're gonna dig a trench through it, lay our pipe, and that'll prevent this from washing away. We're gonna go take a little field trip. We're gonna see Uncle Nate's pond. My brother-in-law's got a, a farm pond very similar to what we wanna put in here. We're gonna take a little road trip and go visit and see what that one looks like. Let's grab the fishing poles while we're there. <laughs> I'm trying to see what size pipe we can get away with on our uh, pond here. The smaller the pipe, the less money it is. But you don't want to go too small with your pipe because in a flood you get a lot of rain and last thing you want is to blow the whole dam because you were cheap. For uh, us Pennsylvanians, we remember Johnstown. <laughs> don't skimp on your dam. His pond looks nice, man. Oh, Looking yeah. good. Hey, there it is, right there. Yeah. I was wondering about this kind of design, having your stand pipe in the corner and just going through the ground at this level. He's got a foot. So it's a one foot, one foot pipe. 
this is exactly what I want to do. And seeing my brother-in-law's pond, knowing that it's working good for him, this tells me, all right, this is this will be a good idea. All right, very, very good news. Uh, going to my brother-in-law's pond was a really smart idea because I was able to see where he put his standpipe and how he put it in. Being able to see how he set his pond up gave me some new ideas of how to set our pond up. It's always good to go and see how other people do stuff because especially when it's your first time doing something, you know, you get a better idea of what you need to do and uh, in this case, it's gonna save me a lot of money. So I saw my brother-in-law put his standpipe in the corner of the pond instead of like way out in the middle where a lot of people I see put them. That shortened the amount of pipe we need, but it also, and this is the big thing, means that our 90 degree turn in the pipe to let the water drain is at the bottom of the trench, which means it's surrounded by all kinds of clay. That means you don't need a water type pipe. Water type pipe is three times as much money as your regular stuff. So now we just seriously saved money. We took a $3,000 plus pipe bill, which <laughs> That was depressing this morning. We turned it into a $1,000 bill. So I can handle that. For some trout and some catfish, we can handle a $1,000 bill, right? Yeah. We, that, that math we works. Take the 2000 Well, what do you mean by trout and catfish? Oh, uh-oh, we're back to this again. Mr. Bass over here. Jimmy Houston over here wants bass in the pond. <laughs> The other 2,000 bills can go to stocking. Oh, I like the sound of that. Now we're talking. This is good timing too, because it's starting to rain really good. I hope we start catching water. Good. All right, well, I forgot to check. Whenever you're using a trailer, you got to match the ball size of your hitch to the trailer. Mine is too small. So we don't want to go taking this down the road at 60 miles an hour with a bunch of pipe in the back and have it come off. I gotta get the right hitch for this. Two hours later. Okay, we got our big ball. Let's do this. All right, we just got to our pipe supplier. We're gonna go in, we're gonna buy all our pipe that we need and fortunately it's a lot less money than what we th first thought it was going to be so that's good so we're going to load all this up and uh, then we'll take it all back right now danny is busy digging the trench we should be able to get all this in today and hopefully get it compacted and backfilled because it's starting to rain and i want to catch every drop now every time it rains it's going to be like oh we're that much closer to catching fish We are loaded up. We got our pipe, our elbow, and we are ready to go. Where did I put the keys? As long as we didn't lose the keys. Here we go. There it is. Let's go. Back to the pond. We just got back to the site and Danny has this trench for our pipe already dug which is awesome. There's the pond. I'm standing on the dam and this trench goes right down through and out to a little pond that's been here holding water who knows how long. <laughs> this trench, we're gonna lay two pipes in. We're gonna lay both pipe in here Plumb them, get them all set, and then compact in layers. Repack the dam, get everything happy, and then pray for rain. We've been praying for clay, it's time to pray for rain.
why this is gonna work so good. It, the All the creases on this pipe. So we went from a watertight pipe to realizing we could bury the elbow, bury this connection here. Nothing needs to be watertight when it comes to the connections because we're gonna be packing solid clay. This is what we're putting in the bottom of the trench. We have a four inch line of SDR 35 and then we have a one foot 12 inch corrugated pipe. The 12 inch corrugated is gonna be what our stand pipe is. So that's gonna take the bulk of the water. Should we ever have to drain the pond down? That's what the four inch line is for. But we're putting them both in the same trench and what we're gonna do is fill over the top of them and compact it with the jumping jack, which we just picked up from the local rental place. So we're gonna fill, compact, fill, compact, all the way back up, rebuild our whole entire dam that we just built, rebuild it, hopefully get everything really secure, really well packed with clay, and watch it hold as the rain starts coming. It cannot come soon enough. I wanna see this happen. Well, I guess it officially, once this is done, it can't come soon enough. Then we'll be happy. I ate too much Wendy's for this. <laughs> Should have picked the salad. <laughs> epic <laughs> to like have just finished digging the pond and literally today got our drain pipe and our stand pipe in still got to put it up but it's in and look what's happening the rain we've been talking about it's arriving <laughs> i better get this arc finished up before the rain picks up am i right <laughs> moment for the pond dig. We got the stand pipe in. So we got that in. It's getting late in the day. We won't be able to finish packing that in, uh, but I don't think we're going to get a <laughs> hurricane overnight. Not tempting fate here, but so we're going to leave that like that. We'll come back in the morning. We're going to finish filling the hole here in the dam, pack that up tight, and then I'm going to learn how to run a bulldozer because Danny's gotta go, which means I'm here solo. So let's see if I can learn how to run that bulldozer so I can finish prepping for our house because the next thing we gotta do is pick a location for a house, do a foundation, and get ready to start building. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna carefully backfill this standpipe. So we're gonna dump on either side of the standpipe clay and then pack it manually with the jumping jack. That really good compaction will keep this all really sealed and keep water from seeping through.
working up a sweat. It's like 68 degrees, middle of November. Should not be so hot. I was hoping for some colder temps. This is like, oh. Got the damn plugged again. We're uh, we're down just a little little bit from the top. Sandpipe's nice and straight. It's in. Bring on the rain. Sandpipe so tight to the dam, it comes out at the back here and goes into the woods. I didn't need a whole length of pipe. That's like 200 and change sitting on the top of my car. You know that's going back to the pipe store. We're gonna run that thing back, get some lunch, and get back here. Danny can fill up this dam with the dozer, get it right back to the top where it was at, and then it's time for me to learn how to run the bulldozer because Danny's leaving and I gotta be able to do this without him. So are we gonna finish the pond today? Well, I made a mistake yesterday. I forgot, I forgot to get the shutoff valve for the drain line, which means if it rains, the pond's just gonna drain. So I gotta run back to the pipe store anyway. I'm gonna return my big piece of pipe here, get that valve that I need, and race back here, hopefully in time to finish up with Danny before he leaves us, which is at the end of the day today. Let's see if we can get back in time to finish the pond. Are we gonna finish today? I don't know. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, we are back. We were able to return our pipe and at the same time pick this guy up. This is a little gate valve. And what this is gonna do, we're gonna connect up to our drain pipe, which is at pretty much the bottom of the pond. We're gonna run that into this gate valve and we're gonna put a riser on it. This little valve here underneath a riser will be here in case we ever needed to, for some reason, drain our pond. All we would have to do is come over here and just pull up and the pond would start to drain. Now, why would we ever want to drain the pond? There's a lot of reasons you might want to drain your pond. If you have some kind of invasive species of seaweed takeover, you can drain a pond and kill it off. If you want to harvest a bunch of fish that have grown and make it easy to harvest them, you can drain the pond and pull them out of there. Uh, invasive species of fish that you want to kill, uh, even just you know, lowering your pond for an oncoming storm. There's a lot of reasons you'd want to be able to control the depth of your pond. And this simple, pretty inexpensive valve, I think it was like 75 bucks, with a little bit of pipe, four inch pipe in there, is just a nice safety built into the pond that allows us to have more control over it and uh, manage it properly. <laughs> This is a big moment of truth here. We installed our stand pipe and we're ready to, we've got it backfilled, compacted, looks good. Now we have to check it to make sure it's right. <laughs> so what I gotta do is I gotta set the laser up and then shoot that elevation where we want our water line and then shoot the pipe and make sure we put it in right, make sure we can get the water with that stand pipe to the right elevation. You've seen us use this laser throughout this entire project. Some people have been wondering how it works. So that laser, it's like a little mini Death Star. It shoots out a laser beam all around 360 degrees, perfectly level. Imagine now that this target here, well, that's the peaceful planet of Alderaan. We're gonna go way over there across this pond and we're gonna see if the Death Star hits its target. What? So this receiver beeps when the laser hits it. Oh, there it is, it's beeping. So now the way this works is we go to the top water level 
and we move the target so that it's beeping when we're on top of our benchmark and then we go over to our pipe and see where that beeping happens and we spray paint a line right there. Does that make sense? This is our top of water benchmark. I'm gonna put this right on it. If we did this right, I will walk over to that black pipe. I will place this stick a couple of inches above the surface of the dirt and it will beep. Let's see. By the way, if you have any family members on Alderaan, you might want to give them a quick call. Just saying. Well, Princess Leia, we've hit our target. We did put a little bit too much dirt back around this pipe. So what we're gonna do is just dig out around it, scrape it down an inch or two. We want a little bit of pipe sticking up. We don't want dirt running into the pipe. So we're gonna just clean a couple feet around the edges and we'll be all set. And that pipe will be ready to catch water as it starts to rain. So not bad at all. Would have been better if we hadn't, if we didn't have to scrape an inch out, but I mean, pretty good for for doing this, I mean, pretty good. Some of you remember back at the beginning of this journey when I learned to run that machine back there, the Gradle. Now, this was a tough one because it had different controls than I was used to. <laughs> Never run a Gradle. The controls to this machine, they're like the opposite controls of what I'm used to. ISO controls or SAE controls. Apparently I beat that drum a little hard. The levers are completely reversed as to what they're supposed to do. If you're used to holding your joysticks like this for JCB, go like this. It's kind of frustrating. Opposite controls of what I'm used to. Sorry, JT. Now it's time for me to learn another machine. The difference here is I ran excavation machines for years and years. Oh, sorry, JT, I won't, yeah. Anyway, uh, dozers? Yeah, I have like zero experience on dozers. So, how's this gonna go? Danny's leaving, he's a master on the dozer. I now have to take over prepping my foundation for our home, leveling out, putting in some swales that'll feed the pond, leveling the property. There's a lot of dozer work to do and I have very little experience. This should be interesting, but before we worry about any of that, let's see if I can even run this thing without winding up in the bottom of the pond. Okay, here we go. Another complete first. And let's go lower. Well, I'll be honest, I'm a little scared. Running that dozer was just fun. <laughs> the great all I was fighting the whole time trying to figure out, you know, don't operate it the way my, my brain told me to because it's those reverse controls. I won't get into it again. The dozer was just a lot of fun because I got to figure out how to run it and just go with it. And it was exciting. It was just kind of like, it was like hopping on a horse on a trail ride and like, whoa, there she goes. Let's see if I can figure out how to control this thing. So we'll see in the coming days if I'm able to do this without the help of a really expert like Danny. So it's been a great week. Did we finish the pond? Kind of. <laughs> we didn't finish everything. There's still a to-do list, a button-up list. 
but the pond dam is up. The drainage pipes are in. I have a valve I can operate. So basically the pond is operational. The only thing we have left to do, we have to still put in an overflow spillway. So we definitely got to do that before we shut the valve at the bottom. And we have to dress it up, plant, smooth out some sides. So there's still some pond work to do. But the big push for the pond, it, we can catch water now. So as soon as it starts raining, we can catch water. Before you know it, maybe we'll get to ice skate this winter. That's kind of my goal, ice skate. Maybe even ice fish. How cool would that be? Uh, we definitely have to thank everybody who helped us get to this point so far. Uh, the family members who've lent us machines. Danny spending time out here helping us with all his expertise in pond building. My parents helping me set it up. Kay's parents helping with uh, machines and, and support. And uh, you guys for watching and sharing the series. If you're enjoying it, let other people know. If you missed the beginning announcement of why we're moving, go back and watch the very beginning. Some people are wondering why are we moving from a good homestead to a bare piece of land. Go back and watch that. And we will see you in the next video.